Dream Team, Sacktown Sports. DeMar DeRozan has been making the rounds. Uh, he was recently on the uh, Hoop Collective with Brian Windhorst, and he's been all over the place on a lot of pods and talked a lot about his book, uh, which is fascinating. We hope to have him on our show at some point here before too long. He's been talking about um, his time with the Spurs. He said something interesting uh, today. He said he hopes to end his career with Toronto. And he said, I'd like to see things kind of, you know, kind of go full circle. And perhaps he's talking about some kind of ceremonial retirement at the end. I don't know, but it's interesting. He's very open about that. He'd like to see uh, things wrap up for him in Toronto. But he also talked about coming to the Kings. And DeMar DeRozan says the recruitment effort from the Kings was definitely a, a group effort. All those guys had reached out. The crazy thing, like I remember one morning I had a text from Malik, De'Aaron. Um, obviously, I, I've known Trey uh, Trey Lyles for, for years. Played with him in San Antonio. Um, Sabonis, uh, Leandro Barbosa re- reached out. He only, <laughs> that was my vet when I my second third year in the league. So he he was blowing my phone up nonstop. So um, everybody, it was kind of like a collective effort that made me feel overly wanted. How about that? Even Leandro Barbosa in on the recruitment. That's out to Coach Barbosa. Yeah, of DeMar DeRozan, who yeah. potentially changes the direction of this whole thing here. Yeah, he does. I think he does. I, I had a doctor's appointment today, and I was talking to my my doctor, and he uh, he's like, hey, what do you think about the Kings? Think about DeMar DeRozan. You know, and I told him, I said, the one thing DeMar DeRozan for me brings is leadership, um, something that I think the Kings lack inside the the locker room not outside the locker room and then the other part of it is is he also brings stability in the form of we know hey, i think there's still a few questions with a couple of the stars of, of sacramento kings we we ask those questions not so much about as, their best players yeah i think so You're talking to Aaron and domas yeah i think there there's still question marks because I believe some people believe they can be better. It, we we constantly ask for, um, you know, De'Aaron to hit his free throws. We constantly ask for Demontis to make, you know, put up four, three to four more points. Make that double-double really stick, you know, low 20s and 12. And to me, those are questions that people are still wondering if the Kings can do. There's really no question about what DeMar DeRozan brings to the table. Because he and, and and it may be because he's of his age, but I think there are a few questions for the Kings' top players that people are still yet to get an answer to. Mm, I think one of the best things he could do. He's not known as a great defender, but with his just years and years of experience, I think he's a guy that could help the Kings at times get organized at both ends of the floor. And again, I know he's not going to make an All League team, but you know, last year we saw the offense at times. Bogged down was one of the mysteries. The offense had been so good the year before. And then last year, there were times when the offense was like, it ain't happening. So DeMar DeRozan not only gives you another dimension to your offense, and he can get to the line and make free throws, but I think he just helps with ex- his experience. You know, come crunch time or those periods when the offense isn't flowing, I think he has a potential to help you get organized at both ends of the floor, too. Yeah. Really important. Yeah, definitely. And he just brings, you know, the know-how. He's yeah. been around the league. He's a future Hall of Famer. People respect him. You know, even amongst that conversa- that that interview, that conversation, if you have an opportunity, you can. You know, Brian Windhorse, and it's, maybe it's just Wendy being Wendy, but Wendy is like, even you can hear the tone in some of the questions that he asked about the Kings, which are very, there's only four or five questions within the whole interview. He talks about the Kings, and it's really like the last three to four minutes. But he's like. Which is a shame, by the way. Well, I get it. But the other part about this, and, you know, we have to remove our king color glasses in the form of this. DeMar is everywhere. Yeah. And he's been asked the same questions nine times out of 10. Yeah. You're really not getting anything new from all these discussions. I know the main thing is his book, and he there's nothing in there about the Kings because right. he hadn't been here. So Very I get true. all that. Very true. Like, even he asked about the Bulls and did he want to leave. And DeMar was like, no, I didn't really want to. But, you know, for financial reasons and things, I chose, you know, we came to a conclusion that I probably need to leave. But I just think – DeMar brings something that the Kings don't have. But I, I go back to the windy part of it. He's like, you know, guys of your caliber don't normally go to the Sacramento Kings yeah. in free agency. Mm-hmm. You know, there aren't. And he's, he says, 
you know, and I'm paraphrasing, I can't really remember a person like you, a person's of your ilk, signing with the Sacramento Kings as a free agent. Um, and the very first thing I was like, well, Vlade, Vlade, you know, I'm screaming. But even then, that's that's 20 odd years ago, man. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, so it was, yeah. yeah, it's like that's the point. And so I think when you have a guy who wants to be here, which he said, he said numerous times, I want to be a part of the Sacramento Kings. He also said those guys over there want to win, 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 win. He sounds like J-Rod. They want to win. And I want to win, too. I'm looking for a ring. I think with that know-how, with the stability and who he is, for me, I think it's a it's an all-around win. Pardon the pun. I think everybody in the organization, and especially Coach Brown and Monty McNair, they deserve a ton of credit for creating the type of culture, environment, whatever you want to call it, that is appealing to a guy like DeMar DeRozan. You know, because before they got here, we know you'd go this way, two steps forward, three steps back. A guy like DeMar DeRozan would not even, Sacramento, no, I don't really want to do that. And he admitted that even this time he had to think about it. So for them to just establish the culture to that extent and get it moving in the right direction to the extent that DeMar DeRozan goes, yeah, I can do that. That's a, that's a credit to the entire organization. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, it just shows how far why they've no come. One had ever done it before. You know, no free agent. Yeah, I get, <laughs> I get what you're saying. There, are, there have been, I mean, we can't say this. There have been some opportunities where people have come, should have tried to jump on the, the bus, mm-hmm. you know, as far as coming with the, attaching themselves to the Sacramento Kings to win a championship. There was a time, one point in period, you know, that the Kings were one of the leading teams in the NBA. I would love to see DeMar have great success in a Kings uniform, as I believe every person in the Kings kingdom would, uh, would as well. I would have loved to see DeMar three years ago before he went to the Bulls mm-hmm. in a Kings uniform. The great part is he's here now. And that's all we can, you know, that's how that's all we can march to the beat of our drum is he's here now. He's, he's locked in for three years and hopefully we see the three years and it, it, it produces great success. Yes. Yes. Interesting comment here from Amadrock. He's a bucket getter. How do you think he'll adjust to Mike Brown's defensive mind? I think it's going to be really interesting, Amadrock, just to see how they match up. You know, and people will ask the question about, well, who's the four and who's the three? And those are all fair questions. But I think it's going to depend on who you're playing on any given night and who their front court players are. Just going to be really matchup specific, I think. Yeah. I- there aren't many numbers in the NBA anymore. A big man, stick a big man. Right. You know, if you can stay in front of a positionless basketball. Yeah, absolutely. If you if you can stay in front of a, a shifty guard, jump in front of him. You know, I don't care if you're 16, you Michael Porter Jr., or if you are, you know, Pat Bev. If mm-hmm. you can do it, do it. it. Gone are the days, man. How many times is do we scream mouse in the house anymore? I still do, but I people don't know what I'm talking about. What? <laughs> What are you saying? You're trying to say I'm my point is you, you don't see people mismatches. post up anymore. Yeah, you don't yeah, know mismatches yeah. anymore. So yeah. it, there aren't too many amount, you know, meese in the house. Right, right. I don't know. <laughs> I think DeMar one thing we know, and, and let's not fool ourselves. And I'm I'm almost becoming on this show, and I have to I have to uh figure this out, Whitey. Like I'm almost becoming the voice of reason. I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Hmm. Well, it's necessary sometimes in this show that somebody steps into the breach right. and says, come on, what did you just say? <laughs> but I don't know if that's, I mean, you have your moments too. You oh, know? absolutely. We all yeah. do, right? Right, right. <laughs> I'm right. off the deep end, baby. <laughs> but I say this, you know, heading into this season, have the Kings done enough for, and I don't, I, I already know where you're going to say they haven't done enough for this defensive prowess of the team to change, you know, um, overnight, right? Like, I don't expect them to be a top 10 defensive team. I'll, I'll put it this way. You may you know want. that I was really concerned about that whole aspect of it when they brought in DeRozan and we had Jerry Reynolds on. And I said, have they, okay, they've, have they improved offensively at the expense of defensively? And the great Jerry Reynolds said, I don't think so. He said, I don't think they've gotten much worse defensively with this i mean mm-hmm. we'll find out um but they were what 14th last year yeah they improved by leaps and bounds so i think that's where they're gonna be yeah. middle of the pack yeah and so i said i think to win a championship and you know of course there's different things you, you got to be pretty close to a top 10 defensive team yeah except denver a couple of years ago i think they 
weren't they? I think they were 15. They were 15th. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it can be done, but you have to improve offensively. A great but then you have a Jokic. Do we have a Jokic? Um, I'll get back to on that. Okay. Yeah. No They're working out some guys this week. I don't, think, I don't think <laughs> I'll let, I'll let you them. take all season to get back to me. <laughs> uh, Eric Crocker is going to join us, former pro defensive back. Maybe he can explain what the heck happened. Did Kyle Shanahan get out 